Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From a glass handled sword with a relic inside to glass beads that could change history, here are 10 incredible archaeological discoveries. Number 10. Hadrian's Breakfast Chamber During the 2nd century AD, the Roman Emperor Hadrian enjoyed a life of luxury alongside his empress, Vibia Sabina. One of their properties, named Villa Adriana, was a 200-acre complex of over 30 buildings in modern-day Tivoli, Italy, where they may have eaten breakfast on an elegant marble platform, surrounded by flowing water while retractable bridges separated them from their many servants. Spanish archaeologists recently discovered this dining room known as a water triclinium, which served as a place for Roman elites to gather for fine dining and drinking. It is here, atop a pool and with water fountains in the background, that Hadrian would have entertained private guests. The platform was connected to bedchambers and latrines decorated with precious stones. Hadrian is historically known for his taste in the finer things. He commissioned the construction of Villa Adriana as an ideal city, with theaters, libraries, gardens, pools, a palace, and more. In addition to the triclinium, archaeologists recently discovered a separate outdoor banquet space containing a crocodile-shaped fountain and other elaborate decor. Number 9. Egyptian Beer Factory the world's oldest known beer factory may have just been found at an ancient burial ground in Abydos, Egypt, over 280 miles south of Cairo. Located in the desert west of the Nile River, the factory dates back to the beginning of the first dynastic period, which lasted from 3150 BC to 2613 BC, and was marked by the unification of ancient Egypt under King Narmer. In a statement, Egypt's Antiquities Ministry said that British archaeologists first mentioned the factory's existence during the early 20th century, but were unaware of its exact location. The site consists of eight massive basins, each measuring roughly 65 feet by 8 feet and containing 40 or so pottery basins arranged in two rows, which were used for heating a grain and water mixture to produce beer, according to Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. The factory was producing about 22,400 liters of beer at a time, and it may have been built in this place specifically to supply the royal rituals that were taking place inside the funeral facilities of the kings of Egypt. Dr. Matthew Adams, a researcher from the New York University's Institute of Fine Arts, explained in a ministry statement. The ancient beer factory adds to a growing list of recent discoveries that the Egyptian government hopes will revive its ailing tourism industry. Number 8. Prehistoric Cattle Bone Carvings A team of French and Israeli researchers have discovered an engraved bone fragment dating back an estimated 120,000 years at Nasher Ramla, a Middle Paleolithic site in Israel. The bone, which experts believe belong to an extinct cattle species called the Arak, bears six incisions measuring between 1.5 and 1.7 inches long, which may have had a symbolic or spiritual meaning. It was found at a site that perhaps served as a meeting place where Paleolithic hunters slaughtered animals. The carver may have made their markings using the flint tools that were discovered alongside the bone, according to the Jerusalem Post. 3D imaging and microscopic analysis verified that the carvings are man-made and suggest that the person who created them was right-handed. Researchers are unsure what the engravings mean. While it's possible that someone made them while butchering the animal, this is unlikely, as the markings are somewhat parallel, indicating that they were cut deliberately. The lines were made in one session, suggesting that their creator was not marking events over time, and the bone was found buried face up, although it's unknown if this placement is important or not. The findings, detailed in a newly published study, describe the engravings as the oldest known example of this form of messaging that was used in the Levant. Moreover, the team wrote that they believe the use of an Arak bone demonstrated the animal's status within the community and the spiritual connection between hunters and their prey. And now for number 7, but first want to say a big shout out to Alexandra Haynes and all of her students and kids. Thanks so much to all of you for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Number 7. Sword of Henry VIII During the early 16th century, Pope Leo X gifted an extremely unique sword to the infamous King Henry VIII of England. The Pope honored King Henry for his military actions in France to stop Catholic heresy and for writing in defense of the Seven Sacraments, where he strongly refutes the heresies of Martin Luther. Henry VIII became known as the Defender of the Faith. 
The silver-plated weapon has a cross hilt and a silver and crystal handle, which was designed to hold a relic of some sort, rumored to be a piece of bone from St. Peter. Although the sword never served an official purpose, and despite King Henry VIII's massive weapons collection, he seemed to always prize the sword, even after he parted ways with the Catholic Church. Things turned ugly when Henry still had no heir and the church wouldn't allow him to change wives. Pope Clement VII sent Henry a letter, forbidding him to remarry under penalty of excommunication. He went on to abandon Catherine of Aragon and married Anne Boleyn, and in the process created the Church of England amidst much warfare and conflict. The sword from Henry's Catholic days is currently on display at the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford. Number 6. Pre-Columbian Alaskan Beads a controversial discovery of some European beads found in Alaska may change history. Blue glass beads from Europe were unearthed by archaeologists that may predate Christopher Columbus's arrival to the New World. The research, published in the journal American Antiquity, found that the blueberry-sized beads were likely made in Venice during the 15th century. They then made their way eastward via trade, traveling 10,500 miles across Eurasia and to Alaska via the Bering Strait. The findings are hotly contested, with opposing standpoints claiming that the beads are old, but not pre-Columbian. Elliot Blair, an assistant professor of anthropology at the University of Alabama, argued that the beads can't be as old as the study claims, because they were not being made in Europe that far back. Instead, he said, they likely date back to the 16th or 17th century. Even with this later dating, an early 17th century date for these beads is still much earlier than first documented contact between Alaska natives and Europeans, Blair told Life Science. Danish explorer Vitus Bering was the first known modern European explorer to make contact with Alaska natives when he voyaged there in 1741. Altogether, 10 of the blue beads have been found across three archaeological sites in Arctic Alaska, along with items like copper bracelets, iron pendants, twine, animal bones, and charcoal. The study's researchers dated the twine, charcoal, and some caribou bones to sometime between 1397 and 1488, long before Columbus arrived in the New World, leading them to believe that the beads may be as old as the organic materials. Furthermore, the beads are made from soda glass, a material commonly used in 15th century Venetian manufacture, according to the team. If these suspicions are correct, the beads would constitute not only the oldest known beads of their type, but the oldest known European products to make their way to North America. Number 5. Myra Figurines Archaeologists recently discovered dozens of terracotta figurines in the ancient town of Myra, located in modern-day Demra, Turkey. Dating back over 2,000 years, the collection provides remarkable insight into life at Myra, a significant ancient settlement in the Mediterranean region of Lycia that thrived during the 1st and 2nd centuries BC. Some of the figurines bear inscriptions and others have paint on them. Excavation leader Nevzat Chevik and his team found the artifacts while unearthing a Roman-era theater. Beneath the structure, they uncovered a smaller theater dating back to the Hellenistic period, between 323 and 30 BC, which contained the terracotta artifacts. In a life science interview, Chevik described the figurines as an unexpected big surprise. They depict human men and women, including a woman holding a child, a boy with fruit, and a horseman, as well as deities like Artemis, Heracles, Aphrodite, Apollo, and Leto. The presence of the figurines, as well as votive plates and incense containers, indicates that they may have been discarded at the site as part of a cultic ritual. Additionally, the team found various ceramic, bronze, lead, and silver objects. Excavations are ongoing, and the terracotta figurines will be displayed at the Andriake Lycian Civilizations Museum in Antalya. Number 4. Aztec Eagle Earlier this year, archaeologists with Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History reported the discovery of a stunning 600-year-old Aztec bas-relief sculpture depicting a golden eagle. They found the incredible artwork in the Templo Mayor, or the Great Temple, an ancient pyramid-shaped structure in the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, located in modern-day Mexico City. Golden eagles represented war and sacrifice to the Aztecs and was the symbol of one of the culture's elite warriors. It was also associated with the sun god Huitzilopochtli, as the Aztecs believed that the golden eagle was present at the sun's birth. The raised image, which measures roughly 3.5 feet long by 27.5 inches, was carved from stone into the temples during the mid-15th century reign of Moctezuma I, the second Aztec emperor and the city's fifth king. 
It's located near a circular building called the Cuajicalco, whose name means place of the eagle's gourd. According to 16th century documents, this is where past rulers were ritually cremated. It was found in February 2020 as part of an ongoing excavation project at Templo Mayor, which was located in the center of Tenochtitlan and served as the center of Aztec culture. The bas-relief is the largest among 67 similar depictions found throughout the temple. Number 3. Ancient Mosque In the northern Israeli city of Tiberias, near the Sea of Galilee, archaeologists have uncovered one of the earliest mosques on record. It dates back roughly 1,350 years to the late 7th century, just a few decades after the Prophet Muhammad died. Archaeologists found remnants of the building beneath a mosque that had been built on top of it. Many historic mosques are built over and are still used for worship to this day, meaning researchers cannot excavate them. But the mosque in Tiberias is no longer used, providing a rare opportunity for archaeologists to explore its remains, which consist only of the building's foundations and associated artifacts, including coins and pottery fragments. Excavation leader Katia Citrin Silverman explained in a Live Science interview that the mosque was discovered back in the 1950s, but experts initially mistook it as a Byzantine-era market. She noticed that the site structures resembled the Great Mosque of Damascus, which dates back to the early 8th century, leading the team to determine that the 72 by 160 foot main building is, in fact, a mosque. Over the years, excavations have procured broken roof tiles from when an earthquake collapsed the mosque in 1068, as well as bronze chains that once held glass lamps. The discovery of the simple structure, which was located near much grander Jewish and Christian houses of prayer, indicates that Islamization occurred gradually in the city and that the rulers practiced religious tolerance, even after Muslims conquered Tiberias in 635. A tombstone found at the site suggests that the mosque was used until the 900s. Number 2. Stonehenge Graves while conducting routine excavations ahead of the construction of a road tunnel near Stonehenge, archaeologists discovered ancient graves dating back 4,500 years, as well as a strange earth enclosure, prehistoric pottery, and other artifacts. UK authorities commissioned experts to survey the two-mile stretch where they planned to build the tunnel. The team made their finds using traditional methods such as digging pits and geophysical survey equipment. The graves are thought to belong to individuals from the mysterious Beaker culture, who were named for the bell-shaped pottery vessels that they buried their dead with and lived in Western Europe between 4,800 and 3,800 years ago. One burial belongs to a baby who was laid to rest alongside a pot, and another contained the crouched remains of a woman who died in her 20s, who was also buried with a pot. Both graves are roughly the same age as the smaller blue stones at Stonehenge, according to Matt Leavers, a consultant archaeologist for Wessex Archaeology who spoke with Live Science. Additionally, the team found buried collections of flints, pottery vessels, deer antlers, and more. Stonehenge was built over a very long period of time. Even individual phases of its construction could have taken years or decades to complete, Lieber said, adding it's entirely conceivable that the people who left those things behind or who were buried nearby had some role in Stonehenge's construction. To the south of the graves, the team found a middle to late Bronze Age enclosure made up of buried ditches, dating back an estimated 3,500 years. They also discovered ditches that may have been part of Vespasian's camp, an Iron Age fort named after the Roman general and emperor who led a force during the Roman invasion of Britain after 43 AD. Number 1. Iron Age Houses Archaeologists were shocked when they discovered over a dozen Iron Age roundhouses and a Roman villa while performing excavations ahead of the redevelopment of the visitor center at Wittenham Clumps, a famous landmark in Oxfordshire, England. When asked whether the team had high hopes going into the project, Lisa Westcott Wilkins of Dig Adventures told The Guardian, We hoped. You never really know for sure, but honestly, it is astonishing that so much evidence has come up of people's actual daily lives. It's been one of those digs where you feel you can almost reach out and touch them. The roundhouses date back between 400 BC and 100 BC, and the villa was built during the late 3rd or early 4th century AD. Each roundhouse measures roughly 33 feet in diameter and was inhabited by farmers. The villa is only partially excavated because it surpasses the designated work area. The team uncovered at least two Roman cemeteries containing stone corn-drying ovens and over 40 burials. Additionally, they found pottery shards, surgical instruments, Roman combs made out of bone, and Iron Age pots. Once the dig is complete, the organization hopes to create three life-sized Iron Age roundhouses, offering visitors a glimpse at what the settlement looked like during its heyday. Thanks for watching! Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time! Bye!